Well, here he is, the SH Figure Arts Iron Man Mark 50. Wow, I can't believe there's been 50 variations of the Iron Man suit. And for the most part, the suits that have been released have been designed pretty well, including my all-time favorite, the Mark 50. What we have here is something that's far and away from that design, with a very contoured and futuristic look compared to the modern designs of the five and most of the suits that I've come across. Tony Stark donned this suit in the movie Avengers Infinity War and really kicked butt with the suit's beefed up abilities and some surprising weaponry, which proved very sufficient up until a point, of course. I like the design of this suit because there's so much going on with it without it being too overly detailed. There's an array of metal armor that gives the effect that the plates are stacked upon each other, giving the Mark 50 a bulky but sleek look, and that's in part on how these plates are molded. The smooth curves of the armor plates mixed in with the ripples and the vast amount of panels really makes the Mark 50 a different kind of suit that's less mechanical looking and more advanced than its predecessors, which it is. The Mark 50 utilizes nanotechnology, which not only allows Tony to form this suit, but create weapons as well. The suit is painted in some traditional and vibrant colors of red, gold, and silver. And to top it all off, there's a glossy coating finish that makes the figure shine and stand out. In addition, Bandai produced translucent light blue pieces found on the arc reactor and eyes of the mask. They're kind of dull, but in the right light, it looks like a decent average effect. However, what's not so average is the articulation, because it's the best, and dare I say, the most I've ever seen in the line, and that's coming off my recent Iron Spider review. Let's talk about this torso first, because this is a perfect example of how flexible the Mark 50 is. Usually the torsos in the SH Figure Arts line are segmented into two pieces, but the Mark 50 is segmented into three pieces. The upper torso has its own side-to-side -side rotation and ab crunch. The center torso has some slight side-to-side -side motion and bends, and the lower torso can sway back and forth, but pretty much stays stationary. But using these pieces in conjunction with each other creates some really exaggerated bends and arcs. In fact, you can see the whole torso separate in the rear of the figure to allow the figure to bend to the front so much. Speaking about bending, this is the most I've seen a figure that's bent his arms, where it literally crosses his face. That's due to the ball joints on the shoulder containing a joint that shifts the entire arm to the side. The arms have full rotations, double jointed elbows, and peg swivel hands. Last but not least are the legs, which can be pulled down to allow more flexibility and for additional side to side movement. The legs can shift slightly and have double jointed knees, ball socket ankles, and up and down toe articulation. The accessories for the Mark 50 include a pair of fists, a pair of white hands, a pair of open hands, and a pair of hands that includes pegs so you can attach the blue blasting effects. The effect parts is the one thing I'm really not that thrilled about. Don't get me wrong, it's nice Bandai included them, but to me it gives off a cheap kind of effect. The Mark 50 absolutely does not need them. It looks great without them. Anyways, you get six blasting effects, two to attach to the feet, and two pairs to attach to the hands. One pair is short, while the other pair is longer. On the other side of the spectrum, you get this awesome giant repulsor cannon. And like the Mark 50, it's designed pretty well, keeping the overall look and colors of the suit with an intimidating and powerful look, especially with the blue effects conducting energy. In this context, I think the effects look great and would be sorely lacking if they weren't included with this weapon. The cannon adds another dimension to the Iron Man mythos, one that I didn't really think would work, 
but absolutely is a signature weapon and one that's surprisingly iconic. According to the instructions, in order to attach the weapon to the Mark 50, you have to remove the forearm and hand of the figure. Break the weapon down so you can attach the weapon to the interior of the cannon and reassemble everything back and connect the weapon to the arm. Or you could just remove the forearm and attach the cannon, since you're not going to be able to see the hand anyways. Bandai also includes this automatic repulsor cannon whose barrel is painted silver. It's a good addition to the figure, but something I necessarily wouldn't use given you've got that giant cannon. Just like with that weapon, you're going to remove the forearm and place the auto cannon in its place, then attach the hand to the lower base. The final accessory is a display joint that you could connect to a Tamashi stand in order to better pose the Mark 50 in flight. And this is a figure you clearly want to use a stand with, since Iron Man looks fantastic in aerial poses. Heck, this looks amazing, period. And with the highly articulated features of the Mark 50, you've got a solid keeper with this figure. I'm Otaku Surf, and I'll see you around.